Hey there, YouTube. Just a heads up, there is an earthquake swarm that is starting to break out. I just saw it just now. I've only been looking at it for a few minutes now. Uh, let me refresh the page real quick. Um, just a real quick look. Here is Borehole 944. You can see we do have a few earthquakes appearing, but let's not focus on the online web recorders right now. Let's download some of the data. So I lost some of this data. I literally accidentally deleted it but it was after I added it into the program Waves. So I do have it on here, but I am going to re-download this. So Borehole 208, Borehole 944. And guys, finding seismic data is very easy. It's very, very easy. So let's see, right now it's 1249 p.m. Pacific Time, which would be 2049 UTC. Let's just do 2050. Borehole 944, so there's 2050. For borehole 944, let's do 208, borehole 208, short period vertical, of course. And then let's see, was it YLA, YLT, YTP? YLA, YTP. Let me put YLA, 01, WY. There we go. And let's do this data for YLT, and then the data for YTP. If you want to know the locations of these stations, just you can look at many different things, but YLT is right here at West Thumb. Here's Borehole 944. It's at West Thumb as well, but I think it's at the southern portion of West Thumb Lake. Here's YTP. Here's YLA. And here's Borehole 208. So we have these instruments in sort of like a circle pattern. So, you, so it's, it's a really good pattern that we have right here with these instruments. So let's go real quick. I want to show you on waves real fast. First off, we had a very interesting event occur right after an earthquake, part of the swarm, just a little bit ago at 12.09 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, which would be 1.09 p.m. Mountain Time. This right here, look at this right here. It shows right here as well on Borehole 944, which, as you guys probably know, let's see, oh, that's not what I want. Let's see, they actually have a separations chart on is this thing on .org. Borehole 944 is 13.72 miles away from Borehole 208. So that's, so we know it's most likely not surface noise. Because look, it's shown up here as well, and here as well. So you can see there was some event that occurred at Borehole 208, or that's where, at least, that's where it occurred closest to. It showed on Borehole 944 second, and the rest it showed third. So I don't know what this is, but these earthquakes, let me go back to the beginning real quick. Here's an example. Let me zoom in, at least try to zoom in on the P wave. Here's the P wave right there. You could tell out of all the surrounding stations, it showed on borehole 944 first. It showed here first. Now this is a microquake. It showed on, I'm going to say, borehole 208 and YLA at the same exact times, meaning that where the earthquake occurred, it arrived, the waves from the earthquake arrived at Borehole 208 and YLA at the same exact time. So, so I'm definitely thinking that it's occurring pretty much right where Borehole 944 resides, which is at the southern portion of West Thumb. But this event here, let me zoom out real quick. Let me go forward to 2009. This event right here, you see this right here? This event is very weird, and I'm thinking it's occurring actually in the northern portion of Yellowstone Lake. So this could be a completely separate event from these earthquake swarms, or they could be related. I don't know, but yes, we do have a swarm going on right now. Now let's go to the data that I downloaded. It's right here. <clears throat> Man, I'm so congested in the morning. <laughs> all right, let's open up all these. Oh, what am I doing? Let's just go one by one. Go borehole 208. Let's look at the event. Here it is at 20.09.30. You can see this strange, strange, strange event. You can tell dominant low frequencies. Let's try, let's see, it's right here. So why don't we use the spectra to see the exact power of the frequencies? That's not what I wanted. <clears throat> there we go. So at about 2 hertz, uh, about 1.3 hertz to 1.5 hertz and 2 hertz and goes down from there. So it definitely is a low frequency event showing on multiple surrounding stations. So we do have most likely a confirmed low frequency earthquake, I'm going to say. I don't know exactly w what this is, really, what it's being caused by, but I doubt it is surface. Uh, 
I doubt it's a surface event because it showed miles away, guys. I mean, some of these stations are more than 13 miles away. I mean, it's only 13 miles from Borehole 208 to Borehole 944. So, that's very interesting. We do have a swarm occurring, guys, near Borehole 944. And this one had an interesting end tail. Look at this earthquake. Look at the end tail. Oh, man, I always do that. Come on, buddy. There we go. Look at the end tail of this earthquake. It's a little bit drawn out. It is a little drawn out. And you can see that here as well. Very interesting. And another microquake there. But, let me put that off. A lot of background microseisms, guys. I don't know what this is. Look at this. It was stronger earlier in the day. You know, people could say wind or whatever they want. Look at this. Here, you know what? Hold on. Let me let me zoom this in. There we go. That's a little better. So first, let's let's look at this again. There's that low frequency event that just occurred. Very tiny though. Very tiny. I mean, it didn't go past a hundred amplitude count. Very small. Showed up on ceramic seismographs miles away, over 13 to 15 miles away. So we know that it was a real event. But borehole 208 um, is showing some very peculiar background microseisms. Look at these. Look at that. And it is showing on another neighboring station too. But it, it, is, it isn't showing on that many surrounding stations. So it's nothing that's really too concerning to me right now since the amplitude is very low. But I am unsure what can cause such perfect rhythms. This is exactly, it looks almost exactly like the uh, harmonic tremor that's going on at Vinny Aminoff. I'm not saying this is harmonic tremor, guys. I'm not saying that. Please, do not think that I'm saying that because I am not. But I am just saying the characteristics are very similar. And by the way, harmonic means regular. For example, if we saw this quote-unquote tremor at Vinny Aminoff with irregular spacings meaning that the spacings of the waveforms are not regular that means that would be non-harmonic tremor and it would pro probably be called volcanic tremor or something like that harmonic means regular the reason why they called it harmonic was because it looked like music and so hold on let me see if i have an example real quick let me go to my study folder and no i do i don't think i have one Oh no. All right guys, I am back. I was actually I was able to find this uh okay, so this is still borehole 208. So keep this in mind. Keep this vibration that you're seeing here in mind. Here is VNSS, which is the station closest that that is feeling these uh harmonic tremor and volcanic tremor events the strongest at Venia Minoff in Alaska, which is a pretty large volcano in Alaska. Look at the similarities. Except, look at the amplitude count. I mean, this is going up to almost 500, 1,000. Once in a while, going to 1,500 amplitude count. But for borehole 208 at Yellowstone, it's just going to 50. But I'm just comparing. Let's just compare real quick. First, let's go to... These look are looking a little sharper than what I remember. Let's go back. Let's see. This is October 5th. Uh, let's see. There is another event. Let's use... I'm going to say... Let's use, I'm trying to find the regular spaced, because it was going off and on. They even did a publication a few years back. Uh, this isn't the first time this has happened at Vinny Aminoff. It's done this multiple times. Seen harmonic tremor and volcanic tremor, pretty much both at the same time going off and on. Uh, here's a good example. Let's zoom in on this real quick. Notice the peaks. Notice they can be a little sharp, but they're also slightly rounded at times. But notice the regular spacings, the spacings in between each of the peaks. Notice that? They look almost regular. That is harmonic. Now let's go here and take a look. Notice the regular spacings of the waveforms. Almost completely regular. Now this can also be caused by a few other things such as, you know, like if there's a large body of water, ocean waves or lake waves can do this. I'm not saying this is harmonic tremor or lake waves. I do not know what it is, but I try to stay positive. But this has been going on for years, guys. This has been going on for a long time, this uh, background activity, except I've never, personally, I've never seen it like this before, ever, in my life. So, we'll keep an eye on this. But yes, there is an earthquake swarm, and this is definitely not surface noise. Whatever this was showed on, let's, let me turn this off. This showed on surrounding stations, so we do have some earthquakes, guys. Let me go to borehole 944 real quick. Let me turn this on. Uh, power log frequency. 
Uh, persistent rescale off. All right. Now let's take a look at this event right here, which showed on borehole 944 as well. And let's just zoom in right here. And then look at that. Go to the spectra. You can tell it has dominant frequencies. I'm going to say about 2 hertz or so, just like what we saw at borehole 208. So this is pretty interesting, guys. We do have a very peculiar, very interesting earthquake swarm occurring at Yellowstone right now. I'm going to say one. Let's see, that was one. Let me start the way at the beginning. Let's see. I uh, don't know what that was. Very interesting. So let's see, there's one, two, three, I'm going to say. Probably four, five, uh, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, so I'm going to say about 10 or 11 earthquakes or so. Then not that big, I believe. Let me find the largest one. Where is the largest one? 2,000 and 1,500. Okay, so it's this one. This one so far. So far, as of, uh, let's see, what's the last end of the data stream? As of 2048, so that would be as of 1248 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 148 p.m. Mounted time. So, yeah, we do have some interesting events going on, guys. All right, and including a very peculiar low-frequency event. So, we will see where this leads. Please go check out my website. I'll try to update you guys via my website or a YouTube video. It's probably best if you look at the blog, uh, the blog section of my website along with my YouTube videos. Also, uh, I will be back soon. I'm going to be doing another video. Man, it's already November 11th. Wow, I got to start working on my uh, yearly volcano updates. Because you know how I'm doing monthly volcano updates? Well, I'm going to be doing yearly ones as well. So, we will. I will check back with you. If this intensifies, I'm definitely going to make another video. It does seem this is showing some type of low-level vibration as well. Borehole 944 is showing it as well. Let's just real quick see if YLA is showing it too. I just, I just want to see for... Shits and giggles. Well, first off, at 2009, we could see that low-frequency event was spotted right there. So, we know that's not surface noise. That was definitely a low-frequency event. But I am not seeing that background, that low-level vibration in the background. Which we would probably see on this station. We probably would see it on this station if it really was occurring underground. So, that's still up in the air. This is a teleseism. I don't know exactly which earthquake, but you could definitely tell it's a teleseism. Low-frequency events usually do not look like that. Definitely showing the earthquake. So we, I will be back soon, guys. Please, God bless, and be safe out there. Remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. This swarm is just getting started, I'm feeling, guys. So, you have a great night.